How well does minoxidil work for frontal baldness? This is one of the most common questions we get asked about minoxidil. Frontal baldness is probably the most common sign of androgenetic alopecia in men. The temples are typically the first area to recede. After a while, this gives rise to the characteristic V shape, also known as the widow's peak. So the big question is, can minoxidil even reverse the large recessed temples or widow's peak? Can it lower down the hairline across the forehead back to what it was? And the simple answer is no, it cannot. So what is minoxidil intended for? This was actually all very clear from the start when the minoxidil was originally FDA approved. The studies that led to its approval only examined its effectiveness against hair loss in the back of the head, the so-called vertex. This is the second most commonly affected area for men with hair loss. And it usually balds either at the same time as the front or more often at a latter stage. So minoxidil has only ever been FDA approved for vertex hair loss. The studies that led to its approval only looked at the vertex hair loss and this is the only indication it was ever actually approved for. In the patient information sheet, this is clearly explained. For example, I'm looking at the consumer information section of the Rogaine 2% monograph where it says in no uncertain terms, quote, Rogaine minoxidil topical 2% solution has no effect on receding hairlines. Similar wording on the packaging of the 5% solution. Quote, Rogaine for men extra strength is for men who have general thinning of hair on top of the scalp, vertex only, not intended for frontal baldness or a receding hairline. So if the manufacturers themselves tell you it's not gonna do anything for a receding hairline, it's a pretty safe bet it won't. Now, minoxidil doesn't need a prescription. So unfortunately, many guys will just buy a bottle and start putting this stuff on their head without proper research or consulting with a qualified professional who will explain the severe limitations of this drug. To summarize, if you're thinking of starting minoxidil to restore your previous hairline, don't bother. You'll only waste your time and money, not to mention risk unnecessary side effects. In fact, various areas of the scalp react differently to the treatment. So what is minoxidil good for? Well, we already saw the answer to that, and that's the crown. Minoxidil works best for hair loss in the crown, but not only that, it can be effective also on the top of the head. So everything between your crown and your frontal hairline, this also includes the so-called mid scalp area. If it's thinned, then minoxidil can help. Now, what we've been discussing so far goes for all hair loss treatments. It's not just minoxidil. So finasteride, dutasteride, PRP, light therapy, you name it. They all work best in the crown as well as the top of the scalp and none of them can restore a receded hairline very effectively, if at all. So the million dollar question is obviously why? What causes different parts of the scalp to respond so differently to these treatments? Nobody knows the answer for sure, but it is probably has something to do with the extent and severity of the changes that need to be reversed for the hair to grow back. Let's dig into this a little bit more. In the early stages of hair loss, when a part of the head starts thinning, you see a mixture of hairs. Some are heavily miniaturized and noticeably thin. They're also shorter. This is because their hair growth cycle has shortened and they don't get a chance to grow to great lengths. Alongside these miniaturizing hairs are lots of healthy hairs that haven't yet started to miniaturize. The longer the balding process goes unchecked, the more the miniaturizing hairs become more common than the healthy hairs. But it is precisely during this process that minoxidil can be effective, when there are still some healthy hairs and at least some coverage. And most importantly, the underlying scalp tissue is still relatively healthy. We'll get to that in a minute. Recession in the front happens so fast that often you don't even get a chance to notice this intermediary stage. You wake up one day and notice your hairline has moved back, or maybe you see a photo. 
Obviously it doesn't happen overnight, but the point is it can be so rapid you literally don't get a chance to notice before it's too late. For reasons that aren't clear, balding in the crown area is a longer, more drawn out process. In some men, you can still see this intermediate stage in the crown for decades after they first start thinning. And at this stage, it is still possible to regrow the miniaturized hairs. What happens after this stage though? Well, after all the hairs are miniaturized and an area has gone completely bald, you get extensive changes to the tissue surrounding the hair follicles. Scientists don't understand exactly which of these are a cause and which are a consequence of hair loss. Whatever the case, at this stage, these tissues have changed and are more or less irreversible. The scalp actually becomes thinner and harder. The sebaceous glands that se secrete our scalp sebum increase in size, often dramatically. And perhaps even more importantly, the body starts to generate extensive scar tissue in the balding areas, the so-called fibrosis. This isn't the kind of scarring you see with the naked eye, but under magnification, it's very obvious. And this scarring cannot generally be reversed. In such a dramatically changed environment, it's simply not possible for the hair follicles to regrow their healthy selves. In many cases, the follicular structure will have been completely destroyed and there's literally nothing you can do, unfortunately. The only way to get new hair in this area is, again is to transplant a completely healthy hair into the region with a decent amount of surrounding tissue. Okay, so how to deal with frontal baldness? It brings us to the question you're probably asking yourself, what to do if I have frontal baldness? Well, my answer might not be what you are hoping to hear, but it is what it is. The first thing you need to do is make sure you preserve and strengthen the hair you already have. Balding is a lifelong condition, unfortunately, and unless you start planning long-term, your hair will only get worse. And minoxidil is not necessarily the best answer to preserving and strengthening your existing hair. To do this, you may require more powerful interventions. You will need a treatment that targets the entire head, be it a medication like finasteride, or non-pharmaceutical interventions like reducing scalp tension, either manually or mechanically. After you've strengthened the remaining hair on the top of the head, the increased volume you gain will create the illusion of a lower forehead. Your hair will literally occupy more space and you can also style it forward to mask the receded hairline a little better. More importantly, after you've stabilized the balding process and maxed out your remaining hair, you can also consider a hair transplant but rushing to get a hair transplant without having first preserved and strengthened what you already have is likely to lead to disappointment down the road. Make sure your current hair loss is stabilized before you consider filling in the hairline. For me personally, my hair has gotten thicker and stronger over the past few years based on the hair guard products I'm using, but my hairline has only improved a small amount. If you do have frontal baldness, it's wise to recognize it early and take action to prevent it getting worse. Okay, so that's it for this video. Please leave a comment below on what topic you want to see next. I'll try to respond to each comment myself. Like and subscribe the video if you found it helpful. And also check the link in the description to learn more about the hair guard protocol that I've been using to keep my hair strong and healthy, despite having started losing hair as a teenager and basically all the men in my family being bald. I've managed to regrow a good amount of hair in the last few years because of the hair guard protocol I use. Thanks and see you in the next video.